Hello, my name is Ethan Hewlin. Like you, I live in a world that never stops moving. Also like you, I have stories. These are my stories. The true stories of a tryhard. Welcome back to True Stories of a Tryhard. I'm Ethan Hewlin, and this week, yet again, it is me. So, listeners, I've had something on my mind recently. A lot of things. Too many things. And that's what we're going to talk about. How to declutter your mind. If you're anything like me, there's probably too many things in your mind slash on your mind at any given time. Which means there's a lot of space being taken up that could be used for other things. Like important dates, or useful knowledge, or just random fun things, but instead it's being taken up by your anxieties, your depression, any anything that is constantly on your mind is taking up space. And as humans, we only have a finite amount of that space available. And more often than not, that can lead to us forgetting things that are supposed to be important, like birthdays, or important assignments, <laughs> me, or even, dare I say it, anniversaries. That's not the case for me because I've written all those things down, but you see where I'm coming from. So what can you do? to, pardon my phrase, declutter your mind room, as it were. I, speaking of which, before we get into this small tangent, I actually recently cleaned my room, and you would not believe the kind of effect that it has on being able to be in a clean environment it just improves so much, which actually kind of leads into uh, the first point I have here, which is to declutter your physical environment. Having too many things out in your room is something that can overwhelm your brain with too many stimuli. And it's also a signal to your brain that there's always something else needs to be done, i.e. cleaning that stuff up. And once that's taken care of, then the space that was reserved in your brain for the I need to clean my room reminder is gone. Now, will it come back? Yes. But in the moment, it allows that little bit of space to be freed up for something else. The second thing you can do to help declutter your mind is to get it out. And what I mean by that is writing it down. Whatever is in your brain, get it out of your brain and onto a physical medium, whether that's a um, you know, the notes app on your phone or just a straight up notebook or some sort of online tool that's a bit more fancy than that. As long as it's out of your head, that's all that matters. As I said earlier, there are a lot of things that I write down because I know I will forget them if I don't, because I know I have a finite amount of space in my brain. Speaking of writing it down, the third thing you can do is keep a journal. So, I'm a bit of a hypocrite when it comes to this one. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did keep a journal. I kept a journal for about a year. And it was really good for my mental health. I had lot of progress as far as describing what I was feeling and it was able to isolate the things that I was grateful for and be able to have a more positive outlook on life as a whole but about well it's been pretty much 18 months at this point I kind of stopped doing it and it was mainly because I was too busy with a bunch of other things and I was just too tired to really keep it um but that's something that I personally need to work on. And I say this mostly to you, but also to me. Because 
I need a kick in the pants too. Um, but as I was saying, it's similar to writing it down because it gets the thoughts out of your head and onto something else that way you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, it doesn't that specifically be these things that um, you write about, but some examples include things you're worried about, plans for achieving a goal, or concerns about a certain relationship, you know, things that are just on your mind. It doesn't have to be anything specific. There's no one way to journal as long as you're getting the things that are on your mind out of your mind. Taking a bit of a left turn, uh, we have letting go of the past. Now, this is easier said than done. At least it is for me. Because a lot of the things in my mind that take up space are related to things that have happened to me in the past. Usually mistakes. I like to think of my brain as a room, right? And in this room, there are a lot of... There, there's furniture, you know, stuff that's supposed to be there. There's decorations, there's things on the walls, there's, there's things that make the room uh, homier. But there's also a lot of knickknacks and clothes and things that shouldn't be there and dust all over the floor. Picking up those things off the floor and putting them where they need to go, that's what letting go of the past is. It's taking time to go through the things that are on your mind and fully process them. I cannot tell you that there's one way to do that, because there's not. Uh, but what I can't tell you is that what works for me is talking to other people about it. Whether they are related to what happened in the past or not, the more people I tell, the better I feel. Uh, this other thing you can do is to stop multitasking. Now... You may hear that and say, Ethan, I'm great at multitasking. Are you? Are you really? I know I'm not. Maybe you are, I don't know. But when you have something that needs to get done, and it's a very lofty goal, you don't do it all at once. In this case, decluttering your brain. It's not going to get done overnight. So, you have to break it up. You have to be able to isolate... This is one thing that I can get done today. This is one thing that I can get done this week, this month, etc. I really like lists. I make lists when I need to get something done. It's just what helps me. A list would come in really handy for what exactly you need to get done. But brainstorming the list is probably the hardest part. Hey tryhards, Ethan here. I want to talk to you guys about Patreon. Patreon is a donation service, a monthly subscription service where you donate money to me to support the show, to support uh, the growth of it, whether that means merchandise or more podcasts or other things of that nature. And I would really appreciate if you guys would be willing and able to give just a little bit of whatever extra money you may have. Because while the show will always be free for everyone to listen, um... The way to make it isn't. And I'm in college, and things are expensive. So I'd appreciate any little amount that you're able to give. So thank you for donating, and thank you even more for listening. Something else you can do is to limit the amount of information coming into your brain at a given time. As I have mentioned on this show before, we have a lot of information at our disposal. And at times, that can be overwhelming. So, a good way to limit the amount of information is setting limits for yourself on the amount of times that you're going to spend on social media, unsubscribing from anything that isn't contributing to yourself, and making sure that the opinions you cite are from well-regarded individuals with relevant credentials and deciding what information is relevant to you specifically. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I don't spend a lot of time on my phone. I'm Gen Z. I do it a lot. And it shows. My sleep schedule is, um, well, it leaves 
something to some things to be desired that is for sure um but that's besides the point and because i've been doing research on this i have actively been taking steps to um, reduce the amount of information i take in on a daily basis because like i have been saying this entire time we have limited brain space so being able to distinguish what should and shouldn't be there is something that will really help you and that's one way you can do that. This next thing you can do is to be decisive. Now I know some people struggle with this a bit more than others and that's fine, but for those of us who don't really have as much of an issue with that, putting off decisions increases the amount of stuff taking up space in your brain. And when you put off those decisions, that just gets shoved to the back. It's still there, it's not gone. It just sits there. So that is one thing that contributes to the brain clutter. So taking care of said decision as quickly as you can is probably a good idea. For example, I need to put gas in my car. I've been putting that off because I've been tired when I'm done working and I just want to get home so I can eat, finish homework. Well, eventually I will have to get gas, so I should probably do it. And the longer I push that off, the more expensive it will be when I fill up my gas tank. So, taking care of those little decisions as quickly as you can will help you in the long run. Speaking of little decisions, uh, the next thing you can do is to put little routine decisions on autopilot. Here's what I mean. Things like what you're going to eat for breakfast, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat for lunch, and so on. Little decisions will pile up, and those are some other things that can contribute to taking up space in your brain. The most famous example of this is probably Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs wore a black turtleneck and blue jeans every single day because he knew that he had a limited capacity for decision-making, so he just took that decision completely out of what he was going to wear for the day. It was going to be the same thing no matter what. And over time, you can begin to see how freeing that can be with not having to make that decision. I understand, at least in that example, the freedom of expression with what you want to wear, but you can't help but see that it will inevitably help at least a little bit. And having routines can help with this. Like I've said before, I like routine, and having a lot of them can be very controlling, but it can also free up a lot of space for you to do other things. For example, I go to the grocery store every Saturday. I do my laundry every Monday evening. I record this show on Saturday afternoon. It's little things like that that free up my brain to think about doing other things, like getting my homework done, or spending time with my friends, or with my girlfriend, or other things like that that I want to do, instead of things, not that I don't like recording the show, I do, but it's some other thing that I have to do in addition to all the other stuff that's going on. Uh, speaking of routines, uh, prioritizing. Things that need to get done as quickly as possible to not as quickly. Things that need your attention immediately go to the top, things that don't trickle down. Accepting the fact that you won't be able to get everything done that you want to get done may seem defeating, but it is also freeing because making a short list of the priorities that you need to get done as quickly as possible will free up some brain space. Choosing the things that are most important to you and focusing in on those things is inevitably going to help you. And finally, to round it off, we have meditation. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Meditation is one of the most helpful things you can learn how to do. And it does not come easy to some. It didn't for me. But it does help you learn to not necessarily empty your mind, but the whole point of this episode to declutter and be able to recognize how you're feeling physically, mentally, and emotionally. 
being able to just acknowledge the thoughts that are going on in your brain instead of trying to latch onto them and dissect them and just pick them apart like I tend to do. So listeners this week, I hope this helps. Uh, thank you again for listening to True Stories of a Try Hard. You can find me on Instagram at ethan.t.hewlin. You can find me on Twitter, ET Phone Home, the O's are zeros, the E's are threes. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at True Stories Pod. The best way to get the word out about podcasts is via word of mouth and social media. So please, please, please share this with your friends, share it on your social media, and if you post it in some way and tag me, you will get featured on the official podcast accounts. And please feel free to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I would very much appreciate it. I'll be back with more stories next week. So until then, this is Ethan Hewlin, signing off. Mm-hmm.